You know, time is just flying by. This is Mary Lou, commonly known as Lou, or Mary. <laughs> um, the wind is blowing quite a bit outside, so I'm not gonna go walk out there. And I feel like I should still do something. No, I've been cleaning, I've been washing dishes, I've been doing something. We were working in the backyard today too. I believe today is the 27th, yes it is, April 27th. So, I'm not sure which one of my sister's birthday is tomorrow. Could be Nancy, but it could be Teresa. <laughs> One of them has a birthday on the 28th and one has a birthday on the 30th of April. And mother's birthday was on the 18th of April. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. Just happy birthday, both you girls. Because usually I forget on the day of. I'm always remembering before and after, just not on the day. <laughs> So I think I'm going to do something different today. It's not really different, but it is. Um, and I'm pulling faces. Here is a thing called a brief explanation about the Book of Mormon. So this tells about what's in there. And then there's another one that I was going to read, which is the testimony of Joseph Smith. And um, I know I should probably read it before I read it, just so that I won't stumble over it, but I don't want to. I want to do it once. <laughs> There's too much else to worry about. So here is a brief explanation about the Book of Mormon. I'm going to read it. And you would find it in the introduction and witnesses of the Book of Mormon. Let's see what it says here. Okay, so a brief explanation about the Book of Mormon. This is the Book of Mormon is a sacred record of peoples in ancient America and was engraved upon metal plates. Sources from which this record was compiled include the following. The plates of Nephi, which were of two kinds, the small plates and the large plates. The former were more particularly devoted to spiritual matters and the ministry and teachings of the prophets, while the latter were occupied mostly by a secular history of the people's concern. And then it says First Nephi 9, verses 2 through 4. From the time of Mosiah, however, the large plates also included items of major spiritual importance. So I wonder why they stuck that one Nephi there. So I don't intend to go read that right now. I'm gonna go on to number two. That was number one, okay? So that's what was in the Book of Mormon. I mean, things that were taken out of those books for the Book of Mormon. Okay, the plates of Mormon which consists of an abridgment by Mormon from the large plates of Nephi with many commentaries. These plates also contained a continuation of the history by Mormon and additions by his son, Moroni. <clears throat> okay, number three, the plates of ether, which present, let's see, which present a history of the Jaredites. This record was abridged by Moroni, who inserted comments of his own and incorporated the record with the general history under the title Book of Ether. I haven't finished that book yet. I've only done 10 chapters. There's 15, so I got five more to go. The plates of brass brought by the people of Lehi from Jerusalem in 600 BC. These contain the five books of Moses and also a record of the Jews from the beginning down to the commencement of the reign of Zedekiah, the king of Judah, 
and also the prophecies of the holy prophets. And then it's inserted in here, it says 1 Nephi 5, 11 through 13. Many quotations from these plates citing Isaiah and other biblical and non-biblical prophets. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Many quotations from these plates citing Isaiah and other biblical and non-biblical prophets appear in the Book of Mormon. So the Book of Mormon comprises 15 main parts or divisions known with one exception as books, usually de designated by the name of their principal author. The first portion, the first six books ending with Omni is a translation from the small plates of Nephi. Between the books of Omni and Mosiah is an insert called the Words of Mormon. This insert connects the record engraved on the plates, the small plates, with Mormon's abridgment of the large plates. This insert connects the record engraved on the small plates with Mormon's abridgment of the large plates. Okay, okay, I got it. Uh, the longest portion from Mosiah through Mormon, chapter 7, is a translation of Mormon's abridgment of the plates of Nephi. Ow. The concluding portion from Mormon, chapter 8, to the end of the volume was engraved by Mormon's son, Moroni, who, after finishing the record of his father's life, made an abridgment of the Jaredite record as the Book of Ether, and later added the parts known as the Book of Moroni. In or about the year AD 421, Moroni, the last of the Nephite prophet historians, sealed the sacred record and hid it up unto the Lord to be brought forth in the latter days as predicted by the voice of God through his ancient prophets. In A.D. 1823, this same Moroni, then a resurrected personage, visited the prophet Joseph Smith and subsequently delivered the engraved plates to him. About this edition, the original title page immediately preceding the contents page is taken from the plates and is part of the sacred text. Introductions in a non-italic typeface, such as in 1 Nephi and immediately preceding Mosiah, chapter 9, are also part of the sacred text. Introductions in italics, such as in chapter headings, are not original to the text, but our study helps included for convenience in reading. Now, what did they just say? It's talking about the, the, the type of writing Introduction in italics, such as chapter headings, are not original to the text, but are study helps introduced for convenience in reading. Okay. Some minor errors in the text have been perpetuated in past editions of the Book of Mormon. This edition contains corrections that seem appropriate to bring the material into conformity with pre-publication manuscripts and early editions edited by the Prophet Joseph Smith. Okay, so that's the end of that. And I think maybe I'll just leave it at that and then maybe I'll come back and do Joseph Smith's um, testimony. But these will be separate, okay? So. You guys have a good one. It's Saturday. It's April 27th.
it's been a good day. People from church came out and helped clean up the backyard. They did a marvelous job. Really took a lot of crap away from here that's been here for years. You know, we had totes of stuff over on the side. We just had a lot of stuff out there. When I say we, it's just because I'm here. None of it was mine. <laughs> I just like partaking of the space, that's all. Dad's been here probably over 17 years, maybe even 18. I don't know how long they've been here. He popped off with 16. But I think, you know, the way time flies, he's probably been here a lot longer than that. Nevertheless, you guys have a great day or evening, whatever the time frame may be when you receive these things. <laughs> that was like a private joke, okay? It's in the Book of Mormon, there's a prophet, a, a prophecy. No, there's a lot of those. In the Book of Mormon, there is a promise, a promise to the reader that when ye receive these things, you may know the truth of it by the power of the Holy Ghost. And all you gotta do is wanna know. Ask, and ye shall receive your witness that it is the truth. So, it's not good to be afraid of something like that because these are words from God, okay? <laughs> I'm just telling you, it would behoove you to read the book and ask of God if it is not true or if it is. Quit wasting time like I've been doing. I've wasted a lot of time. And now I don't know how much time I have left. Maybe I'll have a lot of time left. You know, but time is, time is only measured to those of us who are here on earth. When we leave earth, there's no more time. And I read that in the scriptures too. Not quite sure where, guys. <laughs> Might have been in the Pearl Great Price somewhere. But in the meantime, yes, I love to talk. Sorry, I'm just going to say goodbye. Read over that. You might have to read over it a couple of times, but it's just telling you the sources for the stuff. Because it's not saying that it wrote the whole thing, that he wrote the whole thing. Mormon did some, and Moroni did some, and, and Mormon is the historian who did abridge records. So, probably stands to reason his son did too. Plus, they were in the middle of war. Really bad. And if you guys want to hear me read that, and put in your search bar, don't have to be on my channel, just put it in your search bar, Mormon. You could put a one, Mormon space one, read by Lou, on Lou's touch, L-O-U apostrophe S-T-O-U-C-H. Everything you want to look up, just say on Lou's touch, if it's, if it's something I did. <laughs> Not everything you want to look up is there, but I'm just saying, I, I read out of Mormon. Mormon 1, Mormon 2, Mormon 3, Mormon 4, all the way up through 9, because that's all there was, was 9 chapters. I have read 10 chapters from the book of Ether. And I didn't always, I didn't say chapter, I just got to where I was just doing the numbers, okay? So like, I don't even know what I just told you. <laughs> I've just read a lot of different things and not read completely. The Alma is 63 chapters. There's some good stuff in there. I read you a couple of them. Like the one where it says that we're gonna go back to that God who gave us life when we die. Our spirit is going back to that God who gave us life. Our body be laying in the ground, but not our spirit. That thing that makes my body talk and look and all that stuff. <laughs> I know I'm a strange bird. Okay. That's enough of that. Have a good one, guys. Really. Take care. <laughs>